Shalom, who praises to you, Abba, Bashem, El Shai, Bashem, El Rakak, Dash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well. And Shalom, Shalom to the whole full let. This is Paya Allah, and this is a biblical commentary on the book of Acts, the 25th chapter. And it reads Now, when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, lay in wait in the way to kill him. All right. So that they weren't letting up on getting Paul. All right. You're fully intent. Mind you, remember you had the men that made a covenant not to eat nothing until they slayed Paul. All right, they were intent on getting Paul <laughs> um, and to, to slay him, basically. All right, that's why they wanted to take him to Yerush Allah. Uh, verse 4, but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them, th therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man if there be any wickedness in him. And then he had tarried among them more than 10 days. He went down to Caesarea and the next day sitting on a judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down to Yerush Alam stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul and they could not which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. All right? He's saying, you can check, check, check me out. I'm clean. Okay? I'm blameless. Verse 9, but Festus willing to do the Jews a pleasure answered Paul and said, Will thou go up to Yerushalayim and there be judge of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat. There I ought to be judged. The Jews have I done no wrong, as as thou very well knowest. All right? So it shows you demons, man. All this polit politics and, you know, side talking. That basically it wasn't favorable to Paul. All right, Paul basically plainly said it. Like, look, you know that I'm I'm clean. All right, but as it said before, Festus was trying to find show favor unto the Jews. Verse eleven: For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. All right. So Paul said, if I've gone off, if I'm incorrect in any in in, in any capacity then put me to death, all right? But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar, all right? Because what did Paul understand? First and foremost, that the Lord came unto him and said that you would go to Rome, all right? That'd be the main thing. So he understood what the testimony of Yahweh Shai was, all right? That he'd go to Rome, okay? And also he knew that if he went back to Jerusalem, they would slay him. All right, they would have full license to do as they please. And as far as, as we read on, you're going to see, Festus had no real comprehension of what the contention was. He knew that it was nothing worthy of death, all right? And really, he knew he'd die there as well. But as you read on, you'll see he says it as well, all right? Verse 12, then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, has doubt appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice of C came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's calls unto the king, saying, There was a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders and the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. So they're all seeking his blood vehemently, all right? 
To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for them for himself concerning the crime laid against him. All right. So this is making the Romans sound like there's some high flying favor, you know, morally sound individuals, but we know that ain't true, man. All right. The Romans were pieces of shit. All right. You know, that's the, even the reason why the chief priest and them felt like that's something that could be done. All right, because really they were entertaining it. Okay, really he was entertaining them, should I say? Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none occasion of such things as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Yahweh Shai which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Yerash Lam and they'd be judged of these things, all right? But it shows you, they, they came and made accusations. But as it tells you, you know, um, it's in the book of Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. It speaks about, um, you know, a fool being full of like mischievous madness, all right? And basically, you know, when you hear a fool speak, it doesn't make no sense, man. Oh, a fool, a fool will be swallowed up by his own words, all right? And they were swallowed up by their own words. It didn't make sense what was being said. Verse 20, and because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether would he go to uh, Yerushalayim and they be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto Aaron of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp right, came, you know, proud with their head facing the sky and was entered into the palace place of Heron with the chief captains and principal men of the city and Festus commandment Paul was brought forth and Festus said King Agrippa and all men which are here present present with us ye see ye see this man about whom all uh, the multitude of the Jews have de dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that you ought not be, uh, not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had a, have appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him. And whom I have no, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto the Lord whether I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had I might have somewhat to write, for it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. So as the Lord said, I'll give you a, a tongue that your enemies will not be able to resist or gainsay. All right, and Paul showed himself, showed he was moving within the spirit of the Lord, All right? Because even though he wanted to fulfill Paul's request to go to Augustus and to write into his Lord, his master being, you know, Caesar, as to why Paul is being sent unto him, he doesn't really have a good reason, All right? It's, it's something that should have been handled at the lower courts, All right, but due to the spirit of Yahweh Shai, all right, and, and really the word being pushed to his zenith, Paul was going to head to Rome. So with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. Say Shalom. Shalom.